Thank you for visiting Dr. AFib. I'm Dr. Morales. Today's video segment, I wanted to make this specifically for people who have been just recently diagnosed with atrial fibrillation. If you or a loved one have been recently diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, you may be doing a lot of Google searching out there and trying to get as much information out there about the condition and maybe feeling overwhelmed about all the information that's out there. How do you make sense of what's right, what's wrong, uh, what, how do you get the best treatment options for you? And so this is what this video is designed for you, the person who has just been recently diagnosed with atrial fibrillation. With my patients, when they're first diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, I usually tell them that H, managing atrial fibrillation is like needing to manage two different areas or two different hands. There's your symptoms and then there's also your risk of stroke and they need to be managed separately. They're two different issues, okay? So first is your symptoms. Your symptoms are your shortness of breath, your heart racing, uh, some people feel a chest pain. When you get your episodes of atrial fibrillation, sometimes people feel dizziness or fatigue. And so managing the symptoms uh, is just one phase of managing atrial fibrillation. Uh, most commonly, when you're first diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, you'll be started on medical therapy, uh, which is a very appropriate option for a lot of patients, but there are also multiple options. I urge patients when they're first diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, just because you're given a certain medication to control your symptoms, doesn't mean that's the end-all option for you. There are usually multiple other options in terms of other medications. There's also rhythm control strategies such as things called cardioversions or ablation procedures which can help keep you more in normal rhythm. So that's managing your symptoms. What about your risk of stroke? Risk of stroke is a completely separate issue that is separate from managing your symptoms. And risk of stroke is probably the most important thing when, at the beginning when it comes to managing atrial fibrillation. You need to make sure that your risk of stroke is assessed and that you get put on the right treatment options to prevent uh, a stroke. The most commonly used scoring system these days for assessing your risk of stroke is called the CHADS VASC risk score. Uh, and there are several online calculators out there to figure out what is your individual risk of stroke. For most people, they will have what's called a CHADS VASC score of 2 or greater. And in people in these categories, stronger blood thinners like Warfarin or Xarelto or Eliquis or Pradaxa, these stronger blood thinners is typically recommended for most people. Only people who are on the lower spectrum of stroke risk are it's acceptable as an alternative to not use these stronger blood thinners. But most people are going to be recommended to take stronger blood thinners because they just work better for reducing risk of stroke. Uh, so that's the way the initial steps should be when somebody is first diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, managing symptoms, and managing risk of stroke. Lastly, I also want to emphasize to people when they are first diagnosed with atrial fibrillation to seek a consultation with an electrophysiologist. Now, I may sound biased because I am an electrophysiologist. Electrophysiologist is a subset of cardiology and we are the experts in atrial fibrillation. And so we're inherently going to give you more options for managing your atrial fibrillation. Uh, most general care doctors or primary care doctors or even general cardiologists are more likely going to give somebody conservative medical therapy for their atrial fibrillation. Which for many patients that's a very reasonable option but there are other options and an electrophysiologist is most likely going to give you more options for your atrial fibrillation whether that be different medications, uh, different uh, procedures like a cardioversion or ablations and things which may help manage your atrial fibrillation better. So I would urge people when they're first diagnosed with atrial fibrillation to seek a, a consultation with an electrophysiologist early in, the, in, the, in, the, in your disease process because in the earlier stages of AFib when you're recently diagnosed you actually have a higher spectrum for success whether it's with medications or procedures to help kind of help control it a little bit better. Once you've had AFib for a while, or you've been in AFib for a while, you know, your success rate of different procedures tends to go down. And so earlier consultation with an electrophysiologist is key to having a better long-term success from this. So I hope that this video helps guide you on your way and guide you in the patients that are recently diagnosed for atrial fibrillation to help them realize you're not alone. And there are million of people, millions of people out there with atrial fibrillation who are going through the same thing that you are going through and together we can find the right treatment options. Thank you for visiting this video segment for Dr. Afib. I'll see you next time.